Larry Clark, pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Brand new film, Alfez. What's up, Rockers? It opens this Friday in New York City and on Sunday in Los Angeles at a block party going on at the American Apparel Factory. That includes an all-day block party and a sneak preview of the film, What's Up, Rockers? For more information, you can also go online at whatsuprockers.com. Thank you, Larry. I think it's whatsuprockers.net, right? Oh, I have dot .com. Is it dot, dot com? Net? Well, it's okay. one of them. It's one of them. We'll make Check. sure we come back and give right. out the right one. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll take care of it. Right back, Ron and Fez Show. Ron Bennington. Fez Wadley. The Ron and Fez Show. XM202. All right, we just had uh, Larry Clark in studio. Have you ever seen the movies Kids Bully? His uh, latest film is Was Up Rockers. And... Um, we did find out it is whatsuprockers.net. We've just, given that out wrong as whatsuprockers.com. Just like Larry said. As I said, whatsuprockers.com, and I was immediately corrected and stared daggers at by Larry Clark. It is whatsuprockers.net. And just so everyone knows, again, it's wrong on my sheet. So this is basically, so if you don't count the show we did under the hot tent yesterday, this is basically two shows in a row where this is now, where the funny joke has now happened to me. Well, what, where was the other one? Well, the, today was, of course, whatsuprockers.com, the wrong website, it's .net. Uh, last week it was when Chris Lemon was in here, and I keep saying over and over again the man's first book is A Taste of Lemon, A Taste of Lemon, and what it really is is A Twist of Lemon. Hmm. Well, in between those two faux pas, remember you were ha pointing a dead stick at B.B. King and asking him to speak in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, those uh, that nice memory of the two non-interviews with B.B. King yesterday as nothing worked, and we were never informed that nothing was working as we stayed there talking to the diabetic blues legend. I don't know whether we got to bring up diabetes, but here's the thing, guys, and I know Fez is a little mad, so I'm going to say it to you in a nicer way. I know I had a talk with you guys about when the person comes in, show them the information, make sure everything is correct, and that way Fez has the correct information. People go out and do promotions to promote things. That's why they're there. Like, if Larry Clark doesn't have a movie, he's not going to come in and start talking about stuff. He's out to promote his movie. It's an independent film, so you want to have the exact place for them to go. He's not going to get commercials for it. He wants his information out there as any way he can get it. That's why they have a website. Did he really stare daggers through you? Oh, he looked right at me. I thought I was going to get beat like the kid and bully. To me, we got along great. I think me and him later are going to go out and cruise around and yell stuff at high school kids. Just perfect. I, and I'm going to get left to be eaten by the crabs. And by that, I mean our producers. Two shows in a row. I just want to know something. I know you're angry right now. But you did do a little bully callback that if anybody <laughs> saw the movie, they're giggling a little bit. It's a little bit of a bully callback. Thank you. Look at Sedona on fire. One of the most beautiful places in the world. It's on fire right now. They uh, showed a map of the United States. Everything but, I think, Washington and Oregon, west of Texas, is on fire. Mm. Bad times. The whole place is burning up. Probably not burning up as bad as I am right now. That this has happened yet again. When you talk to these guys about mm. having all the information, did at any point the uh, did the did the talk conclude with "and let's make an ass out of Fez one more time" with bad information? Was that point ever brought up? Did Earl or Dave raise their hands and bring that up as any new business in this meeting? That must have been some look you got, huh, buddy? Oh, I hated that look. Mm. Just think of it this way. You were wrong in front of a guest. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's Maybe right. that'll make you feel better. I'm the one who has the ass hanging out there in front of the guests, in front of the audience. And then I go, and then <laughs> just to defend myself, I, I go, that. it says here, dot com. I like know. I'm telling Larry Clark his business. He's the one who put together the website. He's the one who had it done for his movie coming out this weekend. By the way, what's up, rockers.net is the 
the, the it, place to go. Don't listen to Fez. Come back to Larry Clark, and he'll give you the real thing. What's up, rockers.net? Or as Fez said that, you can go to www gibberish gibberish gibberish. I might as well have said that. For the look I got from Larry Clark, I might as well have just said that. Embarrassing and humiliating. Look, uh, Matt, Matt, you're on Fez. Hey, boys. Yeah. Hey, Fezzy, settle down for one thing. I don't know why. It's it's every time, Matt. Matt, don't get involved in this. This is not your problem. Ooh, I'm, not... out. I'm out, Fezzy. I'm sorry. Hey, you guys, is he as creepy as he sounds? Because he sounds effing creepy. Well, you know, oh. I mean, the subject matter that the guy deals with is creepy. And I'm telling you the truth. I did not fucking sleep after I saw Bully. One reason, I, I used to live in that part of Florida, and then I yelled out, that could have been me, uh, for no apparent reason. But I just, and then I, you know, so it's the teenage on the edge things. It ain't John Hughes movies he's doing. They are odd. I know a lot of people want to call him a pedophile, what all. Uh, to me, the guy came in, th this last film, take a look at it. I think it's interesting. Is it like a Hollywood uh, film? No. It is absolutely not like a Hollywood film. Do you need to see something every once in a while besides Click starring Adam Sandler? I don't think it's a bad thing to break it up every once in a while and see an independent film. Hey, Brian, you're on Running Fuzz. Hey, Brian, go ahead, pal. Going once, twice. All right, put him in the BB King f uh, file. Hey, Rich, Rich, you're on the Running Fuzz show. Uh, Fuzz, uh, I think you're, you're taking a little hard on these guys. It's a lot of goddamn work to type an address in a browser and make sure it's the right one. Yeah, to either type out a dot followed by three correct letters or a dot followed by three incorrect letters. Or, and I told you guys this the other day, the gentleman walks in and you say, Good evening, Mr. Blank. Uh, we have here that you're promoting this film that opens on this date. Here's the website you want to promote it. Is there anything else? That's that simple. No, that's my fault. I was doing two things at is once. Is it? Is it really? Yes, it's my fault. I'm taking complete responsibility mm -hmm. for it. What two things were you doing? Because I was showing... I'm still teaching Dave how to run the brakes. And why is that after fucking seven months that he's been here, or however long? I, I was telling him where to find stuff, how to load things. You're telling still... him because it, you need him to do that when you finally get up. The time to teach somebody something... Is not what ass time. The time to teach it is when the plane is flying along. Fine. Then you put the guy in the fucking pilot seat. Not, uh-oh, we're landing in the rain. Uh, I need to get in the back. Dave, hop in there and keep the nose fucking still. You know what I'm saying, Earl? Yes, but never mind. No, I want to know. I honestly want to know, since you're correcting me, that you're doing two things at, at once. No, I'm not correcting And your job you. is so fucking difficult. No, I'm not correcting I you. I see you sitting there for three hours today. Before Larry Clark comes in, and Dave's not behind the fucking board at all. Why isn't he behind the board when you're not needed somewhere else? Then that's how you teach. But when you leave him there like a redheaded fucking idiot, and he's on his own, that's how he makes mistakes too. And I know that's a talk that we've had before, and before, and before. So you act like you never were, like this is somehow Dave's job fault because you had to run back and check on Dave. Well, he he asked me a couple of questions about it, and I, I got to answer him. Motherfuck, listen to this. The time that he should be asking questions is when you're not needed in the other room. Why are you sitting behind that board right now? This would be a good time to train him because he's not needed you're not needed somewhere else. It's not an emergency time for you to be in the other room. And Dave, while you're grinning back there, this shouldn't even happen. But if you could greet people like a human instead of frothing all over them, we wouldn't feel like Earl needs to get up and move. I actually had a good greeting with Larry. Then Earl said he wants to go out and talk to him. We, Fez and I have talked about this. We can't trust you to be a greeter. You're too fucking wacky. I actually reminded Earl, hey, Earl, when you go out to talk to Larry, make sure the plugs are right and the websites are right. That is true. You know what? No one even knows this fucking story about Allison Bales here last Friday when she left the studio and Ronnie and I happened to walk outside following her out the door to thank her for being on there. We walk out there and hear Dave talking baby talk to her. I mean, downright legitimate baby talk. Hi. 
Ha! It's what we walked into. And that's why I said to Earl, I don't want that fucking redheaded nut speaking to people. And it's no offense to you, Dave, but you, that is a business part of this. And that should be treated as so. Now, I wasn't even fucking mad. Now I am because of the excuses. I thought maybe Fez was getting himself upset for no reason, but the same shit can't happen over and over again. Well, I know this, that if I was producing this show and I had a fuck up on Friday as big as getting the guest book wrong, the name of the book, getting that completely wrong, I would be going over the information of the next guest with a fine tooth comb to make sure it was absolutely correct. He's doing two things at once. Oh, and sitting and breathing. And I talked to Earl last night, so everything's correct. I talked to him this morning, and then when Earl... Why are you fucking selling him out? This I'm has not. nothing to do with you. You could just be sitting back there figuring you're not in the goddamn focus for one second. What is? Come here. What is in it for you to sit there and try to tell us that this is 100% Earl's fault? Unless no. Earl's covering for you, did, and you did this. Did anybody not, even say anything about you? He sold, yes, he said he wasn't able to do the plugs because do you of me. know how to run the fucking board. You mean, yes, I told him go out. The last time. time that you were on there, we heard it's not working, it's not working, and our mics weren't turned on, and you're yelling out over the air. It's a fucking unprofessional show that happens beside behind the scenes. And did Fez and I get mad yesterday about walking around with dead sticks and bothering a, a blues legend? No, we let it go. Fez got mad because it happened with Chris Lemon, and then no one fucking corrected it now. The fact that you yelled at Earl means nothing to me, Dave. No, I didn't yell at him. I'm saying we did, like he was saying that he wasn't able to do it because he was instructing me how to run the break, which I know how to. You don't know fucking how to, or we wouldn't have these problems. Well, You're not ready yet. The le the, the he should be training you. When it doesn't matter. If you knew how to, you wouldn't have been asking him questions while he has to do your job of getting Larry Clark settled. Now, again, uh, Dave, look at me. Is this fucking good radio? No. If everyone would have just let Fez blow off a little steam, we'd have moved on. But you have to open up your fucking pie hole and act like, well, I'm the best guy on a losing team. And that's your fucking thing. You want to bat clean up on a team that fucking... Uh, finishes in the cellar than bad eighth on a championship team. That's your biggest fucking problem. No, I like the Yankees. I'd rather bat ninth on the Yankees than... Why don't you do this? Why don't you buy stupid fucking Yankees bobblehead and sit in the fucking stands the way you do now? You were happy as a listener. No. This has nothing to do with you. Would you let Earl and Fez fucking talk? Okay, it's just... Take your like... headphones off. It has nothing... Do you agree this has nothing to do with you? Yes, but he did bring my name up as the reason Can why... Can I fucking handle that? Was I taking care of it? Yeah. Was I? Yeah, I guess. Earl, get back to... Fez, get back to your thing. This is about you. God forbid, Dave hears two fucking people talking, and he feels like he needs there to be a third. It should be about him. Yeah, and you know what? I did let the Chris Lemon thing go on Friday. You did. I, did. I didn't say a word about that. I'm like, all right, we got this big trip ahead of us. We got to deal with this live hot broadcast out in the parking lot at at XM. And I'm just going. I'm not going to start the weekend off bad. You know, knowing the way we had to start the week. And then this happens, and it's like, what does all the talking do? What does all the talking solve? Nothing. It happens again, the very next guest. And besides the B.B. King incident yesterday, was there a time, Ronnie, when we asked to talk to someone else where a microphone was turned on? How many times did we say, you know, ask someone a question, and they were talking into a dead mic only for us to say, you need to have that mic on, you need to have that mic on. Finally, the truth! Including Earl turning his own mic on. He talks into a dead mic, and he's the one turning them on. By the way, I just did a little scene from Almost Famous. Nobody got it. Fez, everything you're saying is right. But I don't know what to tell you. Either, you know, either we just forget about it, 
and we go on and we just do a shitty fucking show, or you spend all your time in this fucking state. Yeah. It's like Friday, I let it go. Today, it's like, oh my gosh, if, if I let it go... You know, if I yell, oh, Fez is overreacting, Fez is a nut, Fez, Fez, your blood pressure. If I don't react, it doesn't get fixed either. I know, but neither, no matter what happens. They will be happy, Fezzy, when you're in the ground and I'm giving the eulogy. Then those two will be sitting back like a couple of smiling Chester cats, happy. They're both shaking their hands, no, it's true. You'll be snickering from behind your black veils. You're both trying to kill this woman. You're gaslighting her. This is a gaslight. I just don't understand how it happens again. I mean, immediately after it happens. And, oh my God, if I had a dime for every time I heard, will not happen again. Will not happen again. The important thing is this. You will always know that you look like an asshole to Chris Lemon, B.B. King. Right. And now Larry Clark. Yeah. I mean, I guess the next time it happens, what do I do, Earl? You bring you in the studio with the guest, and you explain it to the person exactly what happened. Would that be fair? Oh, what can I say? I messed up. I'm taking complete responsibility for it. It means nothing. How do you feel like you're taking complete responsibility? Did Larry Clark give you the nasty look that Fez apparently got? Did you fix it with Larry? By you? the way, if I would have seen him give you a, a nasty look, I'd have dropped Larry fucking Clark right here in his tracks. I'd have just been boom. I'd have dropped him, and I yelled, look, Larry, I ain't some little fucking Guatemalan kid. You're not throwing fucking looks around here. All right, so you took full responsibility for it. So when Larry Clark was leaving the XM building here, you went out to him. You said, Larry, thank you for being on the show. We, uh, we enjoyed the conversation. By the way, that was my fault. I typed up the wrong website. I apologize. That doesn't, I, yes. I, I apologize. Poor Fez. But here's the thing. No. It, an apology doesn't fix. The man is on to promote something is what Fez is trying to say. It's That's why you're there. It's important to these people. Why don't you do this, Fez? The next time you have a plug to do for a movie, stand up in front of the celebrity, piss yourself, and go, I can't control my bladder. and Just stand there. Because I'm not saying anything. But basically, it looks like the show is Ron and the guy who pisses himself. Yeah, I might as well do that. And, you know, I think back about Chris Lemon. I must have said Taste of Lemon 10, 12 times before he finally corrected me on it. And he must have been sitting there thinking about it the whole time. How difficult is it to know the facts? Why can't we know the facts? Because Dave can't run a board yet? That's what this all comes down to? Dave can't run a board so that when you're typing it makes you type incorrect information? Why don't we just do this? Send Wiki an email and say, we cannot do a show. Stop. We don't know what we're doing. Stop. We sending him an email or a telegram? Oh, I do that with my emails. No one else does? No. That went out. Oh, Alvin! You're on the How Ron and Fez show. How we doing, Ron and Fez? Hey, buddy. Who is it? Uh, who wins this? Team Watley or Team Bennington? Well, on what? On the, uh, who, the number one. I mean, you know how y'all do Team Bentley won this and Team, uh, Team Watley won that? I mean, who's the, the big winner? Team Watley or Team Bennington? Uh, I'm going to say no winner today because, number one, Earl's embarrassed us. And number two, Fez gave out the wrong address. I can't fucking, I cannot give Team Watley the, when the coach, when the player coach pisses himself. Yeah, that can't go away. That's out there. I've already had this moment with Larry Clark now. Uh, Brian, you're on Ronnie Fez. Yeah, hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Don't let Fezzy get worked up. Just fucking calm him down. I know. I'm going to have Bronx an aneurysm Johnny. next. No, don't. And Bronx Johnny in there with a pistol. And it. Fire everybody and start fresh. I'm not even looking at Bronx Johnny. He comes back with no envelope and then tries to give me a gigantic one. Uh, I will never be asking Bronx Johnny for another favor. Oh, Dick, can I get anything for you, boss? Can I get you something, boss? Let me know what you need, boss. Oh, here's a giant envelope and a tiny little card. Please make an ass out of yourself, boss. Please make an ass out of yourself. I don't know how they fucking sell, send things in Ecuador, but this is the fucking 212. 
All right? This is area code 212. We don't play those games. I can only imagine they put cards in huge wicker or homemade baskets. I'm a fucking first world man. I don't know the third world. Maybe you need more space for a mule. I, I fucking overnight things. Okay, boss, let me know. Right, here's a card without an envelope. I also got you that water without a cup or a bottle to put it in. I just, I'm just holding it in my hands. Oh, you just said water. You didn't say you wanted anything containing water. Hey, Andy Mike, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. Um, yeah. uh, tonight on CBS, they got the 20 candidates for Big Brother being announced. Oh. I know you're a Big, a big Brother fan. I am, there, Andy Mike. You're the guy who r r runs the website? Yeah, I run one of the many websites out there about Big Brother. Now, I wanted to get some of the uh, Big Brother people on. Uh, nothing, Earl? Nothing yet, because they're going to announce. They haven't announced. So maybe yet. after after yeah. the announcement. And I'll then tell you what, what, I may have I may have contact with one or two too that I might be able to get Earl in contact with once they're announced. All right, Andy Mike is going to be my Big Brother guy. I'm going to call this my Big Brother All Star 2006 Summer. That's what I'm doing this summer. World Cup and Big Brother. That's a long name for a summer, but enjoy. Well, uh, it's the Big Brother 2006 All Star Summer. That's what I'm dealing with right now. Yeah, hook that up with Earl, uh, Indy Mike, and then we can also say for Big Brother, more Big Brother All Star information, go to cbs.gov or .org. Oh, geez, you're not going to drop it, are you? No, I'm not going to drop <laughs> you're it. You're going to stay mad, and here's the thing you're going to have an aneurysm. When I drop it, does it get fixed? No, it never does. Let me ask you this. You want me to spend my life as a widower? Because that's, that's what we're going here. I'm going to spend my life alone. Uh, Mike, yes, sir. Uh, why don't you call us tomorrow and, and we'll all talk about who the new people are and who we want to get in. All right, buddy? I, I can give you two names right now if you want. Because yeah. somebody slipped up. Uh, Mike Boogie and uh, Will Kirby both have been outed by Mike on his website. Uh, he's taken it down since then, but he put out a site asking people to vote for him. How, uh, first of all, you know those guys are coming back. They're two of the greatest of all time. Hey, does Mike Boogie have uh, restaurants with Ashton Kutcher? Yeah, they. he and uh, Will supposedly spent some of uh, Will's money in uh, restaurants, and Mike used to run or has a, re has a uh, nightclub out in uh, L.A. called Belly, or used to. Uh, so they kind of all hooked up together and set thing up. Andy Mike, you know everything. What's your website, buddy? Uh, the easiest URL to give you would be ilovebigbrother.com. It'll take you to one of my websites. All right, my friend. Talk to you later. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Andy Mike. We will be sure to screw up that website, ilovebigbrother.com. Fuzzy, this will never happen again. It will never happen again. No, you know why it can't happen again, Ronnie? Yeah. Because I take full responsibility. Earl, the excuse has been given too many times now. That's where we are. You're not going to talk? You feel like you've somehow been maligned? Oh, yeah. It's always, yeah, that's the thing. You know, yeah. it's not that, you know, Larry Clark gave me a look. It's not like I got embarrassed. I gave out the wrong book name. I gave out the wrong website name. It's always about them and their poor, hurt feelings. Not, you know, what happened on the air. Not what happened on the show. Earl, how can Fez make your life better? That's where I want to get to be with this. What do I need to do? You don't think I feel bad about it? I feel awful about it. Yeah, I want exactly. you guys to make. I want you guys to to shine on the air. I feel miserable. I'm, no one's beating themselves up more than me right now. Do you believe him, Fez? No, I don't believe him. Because I don't know who the next guest is lined up for this week, but I'm sure it'll be misinformation. We're on a roll now. Why stop? See, um, Go for DiMaggio's streak. 56 in a row? 56 guests with misinformation. That's what I want to see you hit 57. I believe it's the unbreakable. The, the unbreakable record. And also the greatest record in radio. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, you're on Running Fez. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Yeah. Ron, it's, it's pretty easy. It's self explanatory. With Earl and Dave, you can't fix stupid, so you just got to replace it. Uh, I don't want to get into all this. You know, I, I really don't want to be negative. I was in a good mood this morning. Uh, Scott, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ron Fez. Hey, buddy. Uh, you guys got to lay off your staff. I'm sure they bust their ass all the time, and all of a sudden you guys are just jumping. Maybe you guys should do a little bit of your own research. You know what? I am. I'm going to do some research on how to get a fucking staff. 
I'm sorry they work so hard watching us do three hours a day. It's got to be fucking brutal on the two of them. Yeah, that's what I would like to do with the staff is see how I can make them more comfortable, lighten the load a little bit, maybe fluff up a pillow underneath the feet. Yes, that's, uh, you know what, It's that's the job. That is the job to do. Ron and Fez, do your own research. This is the job the producers do. I would have thought the half hour we fucking interviewed the guy on the air would have been plenty for us. I would have thought that would have been it. Matt, that's not enough, Earl? No, I've, I've enjoyed doing the research. It's part of the job. I know what I signed up for. Yeah, you, I would enjoy it, too, because uh, no, there's no wrong answer. Hand them whatever you want. Yeah, if I was throwing a dart at a biography, I'd be feel good about it, too. We, we do an interview, and Fez is like this. If you want to know uh, more about this, go to Larry Clark's Spacklecock dot com Larry Clark Spacklecock dot com Larry Clark's looking at Fez like he just took a shit on the the guy does a film for fucking four years it takes him and it's like Fez took a shit on that film oh that's Spacklecock dot net Ronnie uh, here's Gravy Master Gravy Master wants to kick into this you're on the Run of Fez show hey buddy what's yeah. up Hey, listen, I'm sitting here. It's, like, unbelievable to me that Dave is going to sit in front of you, Ronnie, and throw Earl under the bus after Earl stuck his fucking neck out for the guy two weeks ago. Well, in all actuality, uh, Earl wanted him at least suspended and a long probation. So at that point, it didn't seem like those two were a team to me. We are... You know, that's what we're dealing with right now, and it's no big deal. Whatever it is, it is it is what it is. Yeah, Earl was a big proponent of suspension, probation, all the shuns. Yeah. Get rid of them. Out with that piece of garbage, he says. Out with them. All right, you know, uh, Fizzy, I don't want you to be upset anymore. I want to move on with this. I want you to feel good about yourself. Just, it's so annoying and frustrating. May I say one thing? Um, well, hold on, Mousy. If you're fucking going to come in here, ask him to be on the air. Do me a favor. All right. Use your big boy voice. Use, if you come in here like this, like you're in a little fucking dress, excuse me, ma'am, may I say one thing? I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Okay. I'll cut your fucking red head off, and I'll bowl with it. And be cackling when the cops come to pick me up. You know what? I am so glad he just did that. There, ladies and gentlemen, is how he talked to Allison Bales from Hi. IFC. Hi. And then he twirled his fingers. There was no fucking reason for it. And then tried to say something else to her and wandered away. Turned his back to her. And that's it. She got to look at his holy shirt. Right, what is it, Dave? It was Earl and I's responsibility. Um, it was mis miscommunication on our part. Yeah. What's up, rockers com yeah. does actually forward you to his website. That's not what the fuck is being talked about. I know. You're, I you don't know care if it links to it. Thank you for the fucking correction. The you're man right. wants plugged what he wants plugged. Right. I don't give a shit if it's the wrong information. Yeah. I don't want Fez to feel like he had an uncomfortable moment with the director. Right. What counts is the guy thought it was wrong, Larry Clark thought it was wrong, and felt the need to correct it. Okay. I don't give a shit what that information is. If somebody comes on here and they and they uh, want to say, oh, there's a stack of DVDs at the corner of 57th and 6th. It ain't my job to run down the 57th and 6th and see if it's there. Okay. Fez will plug what they want to plug when they come on this show. All right. Someday... You and fucking Roberto will get a show in a paper box, right? Yeah. On a corner. Do whatever you want there. At that time, do whatever you want. All right. I can only dream for that moment. Stop goofing. Stop goofing because Fez is fucking pissed off. I am. And I'll fucking tie two army boots together and I'll beat you until I see your fucking internal organs. And I look at me. Look at me now. That's a fucking total shoot. I will beat you with these things until I see your fucking internal organs. That's how long it will go on. Right. Which somehow won't be as pink on uh, from your inside Wait, as it is your outside. Did you just say all right? Like you're okay with it? Like you're giving me the okay to yeah. beat you with army boots. You can... Steel tip fucking army boots. If you want to 
give an Indian burn to the sunburn, I'll be willing to do that. Get the fuck over here, then. Fuck. That's what you're giving up. I, I mean, if that's a wise-ass thing, like, no, I'm not. Too, no. Why well, won't fucking I, physically hurt you? I think it's this more... A fucking funny joke. Ow! Ouch! Ow! There's Ow! the Indian burn. There's the Indian burn. I think oh, the flesh came out. That's bringing it up. I wasn't going to give you an Indian oh. burn, but if you act like if you want to give me an Indian burn, it's going to happen. I think oh. some flesh came off with that. It's a very pink flesh. Oh. All right, Earl, this is really between... What? You know what? I'm glad. Bill, come on in here, Bill. And you know what, Fez? Let's get it all out there. Dave, you get up and crawl in the other fucking room. <laughs> feel good about your Indian burn. Feel When you feel that Indian burn, feel like I'm, uh, like you're learning something. Bill, tell me what you told me when I came in today. With doing the B.B. King interview yesterday, you and Danny were trying to get a hold of Earl. Oh, yeah. Um... Well, I, what I remember was because I was in the booth with Johnny and uh, Danny, and Danny was running the board. So you guys were running the show from the New York uh, yes. studios while and, we were uh, in D.C., okay. Yes, and at some point, I believe during the B.B. King interview, you, uh, there was a remote mic that was getting way too far away from the signal, and it was terrible static to the point where it was just dead air. Yeah. And Danny made the executive decision to go into uh, spots before because of the machine will shut off if it goes to dead air too long. Uh, it automatically does that. So he went to spots, and then he talk. He calls Earl, and he's talking to him, and um, Earl was like, it was hard to get an answer from Earl. He was saying things that like you already knew, like crazy talk. Like it, it was hard to get the back and forth going. And I had the phone at some point because Danny went to the thing and went to a break, and then Danny's like, should I go into another break or you want to come back? And I'm I'm on the phone. Danny's holding all the the mouse in one hand, the keyboard the other, right. Ready to uh, loading up stuff because yeah. Ronnie don't know. Ronnie and I don't know we're on the, not on the air. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, that's beside the fact. We didn't know if we had to go if uh, if Earl wanted us to go into another break or if uh, right. or come right back. And I, I I'm like Earl, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I just hear Earl in the background talking. Uh, just like, like he laid a phone down instead uh, of staying yeah. in touch. That seems to be what happened. And I got. Well, I have to explain what happened what? when you guys went into the back. I had no one, like, in between where the hallway ends and the parking lot begins. How many interns were you given yesterday? I would have, I guess, three, but everyone went into the back. Why is that? Because they don't know what the fuck to do. Nobody's leading them, Earl. Fez and I are on the air. We need somebody to lead the guys off the air. No, but I was, I was with you guys. I'm... Why were you with me? Well... Who was running the board down there? But I was uh, I was the only one. I had to man the board. Right. So you weren't with us. So you No, I mean, say, I'm just saying as far as getting like everything spread out, I'm once the show starts, I'm running the board. That's that's right. That's why you do stuff when before the what? Yes, and I communicated that. So the interns just said, "We don't care what you're saying or we're going to run away from you rather than help." I mean, that was, we could be as a runner to try to be here through this odd time between Ron and Fez and you. So you throw your the the phone down with New York, and what did you do then? No, at one point when it was when it started to go dead, I had no way to communicate to you. Why didn't you start jumping up and down, making monkey noises, and running around? <laughs> Anything to let us see. No, but you were out of eyesight. I had to physically. People are so scared of black people. That's why you would have a runner. One of the interns that would be a runner. All but right, I'm I, totally I, confused. I did now. not have anyone. I was the only it's one. It's your there. fault. You, yes, you were the only one there because you're like fucking custard, not paying attention that you're running the troops. You, you're the executive producer. It doesn't mean that you do everything. You haven't trained that redheaded maniac, so these things pop up all the time. This story is so not panning out because Ronnie and I went inside XM to talk to B.B. King. Yes. We weren't on the air. We didn't know it. I didn't see Earl around there anywhere. And now we're also hearing that he left the master control t uh, table there be uh, and left the phone where he was supposed to be talking to XM New York. Why are we even talking? Why has this thing now gone off? No, of I Here's what fucking happened, Earl. Fez did not get the thing read the way he wants, right? Yeah. So now it all is fucking coming out. Because you didn't do your work today, all the stuff that you were let go on and nobody brought it up, now it's all coming out. And it's all falling all over my show. So instead of having a nice, fun, enjoyable show, I'm in the middle of this fucking beatdown. Fine, it's my fault. No shit. There's, who else do we talk to? 
Oh, now he's throwing the headphones. Oh, uh, here we go. There the, he goes. The mic is on. Go ahead, big man. Walk down the hall. Take that fucking walk. Here we go. We, Not the host that was embarrassed. You know what? What if me and Fez do that? What if we say yesterday, oh, we're so fucking pissed off, we walk away from the show? Then what happens? Oh, I just I had to catch my breath. For yes, me. maybe I'd like to catch my breath. Maybe I'll take a fucking walk and try to figure out uh, what I really want to do with my life. But it, at some point, I mean, I had no one left. I'm like, where did everyone go? Earl, the you inter- had no one left because you you've got three interns. They fucking see the host walking off. They're acting like they're listeners and they're walking behind it. You got to say to somebody, I need you to make eye contact with me at all time. Don't you leave until I tell you what to do. You're running a fucking show like a produce what? A produce. Sir. Producer. Er. That's the correct answer. But again, when when you guys started, t- when you guys took off, I have to keep the headphones on and make sure you guys kept Earl, the signal up. Earl, your problem is this. You don't see a problem until it happens. Rather than going, here's the potential for disaster. What do we do if it comes up? That's what a producer does. But you can't sit there in the middle of a thing. The mics don't work for B.B. King. You drop the phone with New York and you start screaming, I don't know nothing about birth and no babies. You're Earl Douglas. You're not Butterfly McQueen, my friend. When you when you communicate and delegate duties and then they're not done at that particular moment when they have to be done. So this is what the problem with Dave is. He, he hasn't been trained properly. Then let's, uh, then let's blame everything on him and, and turn him over to Wiki. I mean, there was even a point, and I'm not saying he didn't do it, when you guys went to the Indy race car. I told Dave, I said, like, make sure you stay in eye contact with me in case there's a problem. And that way we can bring them back, you know, bring them forward, bring them back. What'd he do? No, he stayed there. He watched me. But I'm just saying, I... Yes, do that every time. But I... well, then, what's the problem? <laughs> no, do that I'm every saying, time. But I'm, when, when I communicate that, and then when it's not done, how is that my fault? That means that you should arrange shit on people. The reason why Fez gets upset is that you haven't arranged shit on anybody. You let them get away with it till Fez's stent is fucking popping out. I... I I did that for BB King too. I did absolutely did it for BB King. Did you guys see me standing there by? No, you? I did no. not see. I was either. running between. I didn't the, see anyone I knew except Ronnie and BB King. I was just trying to Wicked coordinate w- with. Oh yeah. Yeah, when me and Don were trying to coordinate, and I was running between Don and Earl, and you know, and trying to get that completely set up. Earl, how can you say that during the BB King thing? I was talking point, to you. At one point, I had to physically leave the board and run back and grab Don and say, "We cannot hear a thing." That's probably when I left. Uh, New York. Also, Earl, I was the mailman for you all day yesterday. Bilsby. There was a few times even before all the problems happened where we tried calling you and you weren't picking up your phone. Most of the times we had you, we waited for you to call us. We called and would go either go right to your voicemail or would ring. There were a couple of instances where that's, I'm that's getting when call... I called Dave that one time because uh, your phone wasn't working. We were calling with our. I think at one point I got pranked from the office phone and it, that line just kept ringing the entire show. It wasn't yeah. pranked. They're trying to fucking tell you we're not on the air. No, it was the. No, it wasn't. It's not like, one. oh, what are these two up to? <laughs> no, it was. Uh-huh. No. No, it wasn't. All those jokers, come on, Earl. It wasn't. Not gonna fall for that. No, but, Answer it and start no, dealing. I know the number to this studio, and that wasn't it. It was from like a back office. I'm like, sure? why is the back office calling me? Are you sure it's not Because you were calling the hotlines, but there's also that other phone, the special phone. Yeah, there's no back office. Yeah. Come no, on, no our office phone. My work Earl, number. you sound like a man now who's in the middle of the fucking... Look at this train derailment one day after we get off. Oh, uh, nice. That looks like it went right out into the street. I wish that was us. I wish that was what happened on the way home from D.C. I thought it went overall, like, decently, too, but I just, you know, I can't believe all this stuff. I mean... You thought that shithole went decently because Fez and I didn't yell, right? Is that why you thought it went decent? Maybe, yeah. Do you, Can I tell you something? Do you know how many fucking points in my career I would have freaked the fuck out over the BB King thing? Yeah. You know why I didn't? Why don't I? Because I'm fucking working with F Troop, and I would be fucking screaming every day. So I go, look, if no one fucking cares to give me a fucking real team, then I don't fucking care. That thing was shit. You don't fucking do that to... Now I'm fucking getting pissed off. 
because you don't know the difference between fucking shit and Shinola. And you guys didn't You have could help yourself so much by shutting up and keeping yourself out of it. Again, this had nothing to do with you. Again, this was Earl. You fucking wander in here and say something that's just absurd. Yeah. Because you don't learn. This was between Fez and Earl. Why the fuck am I yelling at you? Because you can't shut what? The mouth. The what? My mouth. Shut my... Point at it. Point at your mouth. Open and point. You see the thing you're pointing? Yeah. That should be a dead dog's dick for the fucking things that you're saying here today. That's what it should be. If this was any kind of civilized world, you would be sucking a dead dog's dick instead of talking. And if I was you, if I had the choice between the two, you know what I'd be doing? Dead. Huh? Um, I'm a little... What would I be doing? Oh, boy. What uh, would I be doing? Dead dogs. I uh, suck dead dog dick? Is that where you're going with this? No, no, no. Oh, what are you saying? It, oh, if it was you, oh, you, you, said, you would be quiet. Oh, you said spider. If, oh, I'd be quiet? Yeah, I'm going to walk around fucking timid. Get the fuck out, Dave. Get out and think about what you're saying. Get out and think about what you want to do with your life. Crazy bastard. All he's got to do is shut up. He can't. Because this is between you and Earl. has mm -hmm. nothing to do with me and Dave. If Dave speaks again, I'm going to stab him to death. I'm going to fucking do my time... In jail, and I'll be doing lifetime, and I'll, you know what I'll be thinking? Oh, I remember how felt it, when the blade went into a spleen. Felt so good. Oh, don't forget about cutting the juggler. That was fun too. Get back to your thing, Earl. Everything you have said about yesterday's broadcast, I had to be here. I had to do this. I had to make sure of that. All those things that you just rattled off to us, your laundry list. Guess what? We were still off the air. So everything that you just gave to us about how important it is that you're doing did not keep the show on the air. Do you realize that? All these excuses we're getting? And still we were off the air? Yes. There wasn't a time we went to a microphone other than our own where we were on the air. I don't think there was once that a microphone was potted up when it, when it should have been. Well, you know, this is all out of the fucking question. Because we had dropped that show, and it didn't fucking matter, and we moved on. But this is what happened when the other thing fucked up, and then that red-headed bastard started pointing fucking fingers. And I, all you got to do to make this better is that every time Fez has a plug to do, to make it the correct plug. To fucking check with the person when they come in. Larry Clark was booked for how long? A couple of weeks. In fucking two weeks, have the right plug for Fez to say. And then we're done. Then nobody's mad about anything. And then it wouldn't sound like Fez has gone insane over .com versus .net, where it's actually stuff that's been building up and building up and me not saying anything about it. Mike, Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Um, I think Fez was forgetting about the time when the penthouse pet was in. And they screwed up her plug because Earl wrote the wrong thing on the sheet again. It was a few months back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was like, like off by a few Fridays on that one. You look like an idiot in front of that playmate or a penthouse pet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she was uncomfortable because she had to correct me and didn't want to. She didn't want to correct the, one of the hosts of the show. So I see her whispering over to Ronnie, actually, it's next Friday. So, not only am I uncomfortable, she's completely uncomfortable. She's completely uncomfortable, like she's saying, I smell shit coming from your partner's mm -hmm. pants. Here's our buddy, Jersey Rich. Jersey Rich, you came in to meet your hero, Larry Clark. Larry Clark, that was him. I, I brought in my uh, school day CD for Stanley See, Clark. He's being a ball, he's uh, being yeah. a ball buster. He's That's what Earl told me Stanley Clark was going to be here today. When you uh, mm -hmm. met Larry Clark, you were a pedophile like him. Absolutely. Did the two of you uh, hit it off? Yeah, it was like we were brothers. You love the movie Kids? I love it. Yeah. That's one insane picture. Have you seen it, Fez? I haven't seen Kids. You know, it came out when I was in high school, and uh, 
you know, me and my friends had our fake IDs, and we uh, snuck into the theater to see it. So He's a photographer like you, too. Have you ever seen him his stuff? Absolutely, yeah. Tulsa is uh, a great book. Very homoerotic, would you say? Yeah. Somewhat? A little bit. Okay. Just want to know where your photography at, <laughs> where your angle is. Or where your homoerotic level is. you gotta, you got to see it from all angles, right, Ronnie? Uh, Jersey Rich, you're a great bass player. You play with U.S. Steel. You play with Crankcase. What's <laughs> happening now? What, with Crankcase? Yeah. Uh, you know, we know Dave tried to steal the band. Uh, Mikey D and I uh, talked about it. Fez, you got a phone call about it, though. Yeah, I got a phone call about it where he was like upset that anyone would try to take his band. As as I w as it was told to me, <laughs> that's my band. That's my band. Yeah. Well, you know, Greg and I, oh, Gvac and I, also got uh, some phone calls from from Mikey saying that the band was over. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Is oh, this was, a, this was a big blowout. Big blowout. So crankcase is no more. No, it's still going. We oh. we managed to calm him down. We've closed the case on crankcase. Yeah, we, we I mean, managed to tell Mikey we're like, uh, you know, Mikey, what, you think we're going to spend any amount of time locked in a room with Dave with, so, behind the drums? So there was never even a inkling that Dave was going to be your drummer. A drum off, maybe, but uh, no uh, no replacement. Just playing a couple rounds of tease the retard, are you? <laughs> Here is uh, Anthony. Anthony, you're on Run Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are absolutely right. Even this morning on Opie and Anthony, they were talking about Earl's fuck up. What part? What? What part? The BB King? Yeah, they were talking about how they were going to rag on you guys today about this morning when you, uh, yesterday, when, uh, how Earl fucked the whole thing up. Earl, we cannot make radio. Let's just fucking all admit that as a team. We cannot make radio. But he's not going to answer back. So that's the no. fucking new gimmick. Yeah, that's and and that's proven the point that's, there. That's, yeah, that's, that's the fucking point. That's making radio by not reacting, by not talking. That's not fucking radio. That's dead air. No, I, I, I can't express enough how sorry I am. You I'm haven't really yet. Sorry. You haven't yet, Earl. Ron, can I say something? You know, Please from do. a listener standpoint, you know, yeah. standpoint. I like fan point. <laughs> fan, oh, yeah. A fan point. I want to do a fan point. All right. Uh, you know, when something like that happens, I don't know, that hasn't happened very often where the mics get screwed up, but like I was just listening to it and thinking, what is Earl going to say? What is his excuse going to be this time? Right. That's all you can get. Yeah. Like, uh, what. Instead of, hey, something great happened on the Run of Fez show, hey, I wonder what fucked up. I wonder what those two uh, crazy kids thought they were going to do this time. Did they really think they were going to kick the football or were Lucy going to pull it away? And a proofreader extraordinaire over there had just done his homework and put the right website today, Every, it would have been easy pass for him. He would have skated past what happened yesterday. I did like uh, Larry Clark's com. That was a good one. I wanna, Not net. <laughs> I'm going to point this out. This is what fucking frustrates me in my, my life. I was not involved in this. I didn't read off the bad plugs. I don't look like a maniac that Larry Clark Fez does. I don't look like an idiot to Chris Lemon. Fez does. Right. I look like a moron in front of B.B. King. I can live with that. But I had nothing to do with it. The minute that Dave started doing stuff, it gets me involved, and then suddenly it all becomes all these other things, and we never did find out why Fez can't get what he wants. 40 minutes into it, we don't understand why Fez can't have the one thing that he wants to read plugs. That's all I've asked for. Correct all information. All he's ever to do is read out correct information. That's all. It's not a big dream. It's not a huge goal for a person to have. You have the same dream that Frank Reynolds had, that if you say something, it's true. That's all I want. I want to be believed. I want to have integrity with the listeners. Uh, Joe. Joe, you're on my face. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on how you had to keep telling Earl to turn on the guest mics yesterday. You know what? I am not even bringing it up. Earl wasn't prepared for that. So what? It was a road thing. He didn't plan it. It's nothing he's going to do every day. Well, I was told I was going to keep the mics on all the time, but I was told by the engineers, shut the mics off. So turn them on every time you see <laughs> somebody no, take I was the like, mic. Keep them on. Usually I would just keep time. them on. Fez has to look. Look, here comes Bill. It's Fez is going to have to kick the mic on. It's such a ridiculous excuse. I just have to say but that to protect our end, that... When everything started going wrong, Mars and Danny were on top of everything. 
And, and then Marge came in, like when, when every day was going bad, he came in and he said, Danny, go to a break. It's, uh, don't let it do it. And they, we went to break and it had to be done. Beautiful. Static. Thank you for being there for us. Jersey Thank Rich, anything to plug real quick? Uh, RichStillwell.com. RichStillwell.com. Get, get the links to all my uh, band websites and photography. It's all kinds of stuff with his photography, his band stuff. That's it for us, guys. We'll see you tomorrow after O&A. Yeah, yeah.